welcome to the After Buzz with your host, Brandon Coates. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Wednesday's show. We're uh, a little frazzled here. We're gonna get, we're getting things going on here in the building. Uh, some pretty exciting stuff, actually. Um, for um, video purposes, I guess would be the best way to kind what of describe. What a time it. to be alive! Let's say it's it's pretty cool stuff, and hopefully uh, everything works out. And by the time that we're back up on YouTube, October sixteenth. October sixteenth. Everything should be good to go. We just passed the halfway mark at this point when we'll be back up on um, back up on YouTube. Um, so anyway, so I, we're gonna keep this after buzz relatively short because uh, we got a lot of shit we got to do. And um, one of the things I wanted to bring up, I'm going to mention it now, I'll mention it at the end, is with the game that we played today on the air. It was the, uh, did you hear about the movie quote game? Oh, with the oh that's right, yeah, so I practiced it on Scott yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Okay, so we did that on the air today. Guess who won? I'm going to guess not Lisa. Uh, Lisa won. Fuck so you, she was no not, way. So she was not technically allowed to play. The game was supposed to be between Buzz and Joanna. Right. But I would play the clip a second, couple of seconds, and kept extending it. And each time, um, uh, Lisa would, in her chair, she would like turn around and look at me, and she would mouth the, the name of the movie, <laughs> and I'd just like nod my head. She got four out of the six. That's, that's and before awesome. the other, you know, before Buzz and Joanna did. So it, it was amazing to me. So I think the next time we play it, we're going to uh, let all three of them uh, play the game. And what I'm asking of you, the viewers of the After Buzz, is if you have any movie lines that you can think of that would be good for the game. They have to be memorable. It has to be something that people know. Because if they don't know it, then what the hell's the point? Right. But go ahead and shoot me an email with uh, the movie line and obviously the movie to brandon at buzzadamshow.com. Shoot me an email, let me know some other stuff so I can start go grabbing this audio because the game went pretty well. Other than the fact that um, Lisa kept yelling while the clip was playing. So her reaction when I would nod yes to her, be like, yeah, you got it right, would be to yo woohoo. The only problem is while the clip is playing, you can't hear the clip because she's yelling woohoo. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it, it was a catch 22 there. On that one, but no, Lisa did incredibly well, and we were even cracking jokes leading up to it, saying, "This isn't—we're not doing the Wikipedia of movies," because that's kind of Lisa's mo when it comes to movies: is not watching the movie, it's reading the Wikipedia to find out exactly what happens. So, if you do have any sort of movie that you would like, movie quote, just shoot me the email, Brandon at BuzzAdamShow.com, and then we'll be able to pull more of that stuff. And. Uh, um, we'll go ahead and do that now. And then, anyway, uh, another thing that got brought up on the show, I think it was last week, was grapefruiting. Have you heard of grapefruiting, Scott? No, that sounds painful. So, grapefruiting is a thing, and I heard about this a while ago, where you basically you cut a hole in a grapefruit and you, you know, oh. you use it for pleasure. Oh my. And the, I would think you would need some extensive cleaning afterwards. Well, how I found out about this, we were playing poker probably 15 to 18 years ago or something like that. And we used to play poker with this guy by the name of Clay. His brother was actually a WWE and WCW wrestler. If you ever follow, it was really mainly WCW. If you ever watched it and you followed The Flock, that was Raven. Saturn and Big Daddy Reese. Okay. Big Daddy Reese is this guy's brother. Oh, cool. Big Daddy Reese, seven foot two. Wow. Clay, six eight, six nine, I think. And my dad worked with him. And there was one time, a uh, random story about Clay. My dad's in his office and they have some clients in from England. And Clay like pops into my dad's office and then he leaves and as he's walking away, the guys from England are like, holy shit, like that guy was gigantic. And my dad just leans forward and he goes, yeah, and he's the runt in the family. Wow. And like what? He's like, yeah, both his dad and his brother are over seven feet tall. That's a big bitch. And so Clay, he played, um, Clay played college football. He was an offensive lineman for Washington State. And his brother played, I believe, basketball for Santa Clara University. 
and which also happens to be my sister's alma mater. That's where she went to school. Um, but Clay was just a fantastic storyteller. Like this dude had been around. Um, he had at one point uh, told us a story about Willie McGinnis, who was one of the better Patriots of all time. Guy was just a beast on the field. He was one of the staples of those early 2000 Super Bowls that they, that they had, of those three Super Bowls. And when Willie McGinnis got drafted by the Patriots, you know how like in New York Times, up on the big screens, they'll like play the draft and stuff like that. And when the Patriots made the selection, I can't remember who the next team was, but they took the full amount of time to make their pick. So what happens when the team uses that full 15 minutes? The commentators start talking about what's going to make Willie McGinnis a great player. Oh. Willie McGinnis went to USC, which at the time Pac-10. Yeah. Uh, they, they proceeded to show highlights of Willie McGinnis mopping the floor with clay over and over. And it was, and it was all different things. It was, here's how he just, he beats the man on the outside with his speed. And it's clay backing up. And it's just Willie McGinnis running right around him. And the next one was, and now Willie McGinnis is going to beat him with power. And it's Willie McGinnis just fucking running right over clay. And Clay's like, I got so many goddamn calls. Because it's the first round, so a lot of people are watching this draft. Right, right. And, and, it's, and it's just clip after clip after clip of Clay just getting his ass kicked by Willie McGinnis. And Clay even said before that, there had been a moment in that game where he went to his coach and he flat out told his coach, he's like, I can't block him. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. And I believe this was uh, Clay was playing with Drew Bledsoe. This was, so this was back in the mid early 90s right. when Drew Bledsoe was playing for Washington State and Clay was one of his offensive linemen and he just went to the coach he's like man I can't block the guy I'm sorry I, like there's nothing I can physically do um, and then another story from Clay was that he was hanging out with uh, the Big Show you know the Big Show Big, Big Show gigantic wrestler they're hanging out in Atlanta because obviously with his brother being in the WCW they would go to Atlanta and they would hang out with a lot of the wrestlers and he would talk about how he was a chain smoker and, but his hands were so big that a normal sized cigarette, he could only smoke half before it's burning. Into his fingers. Yeah. And so I got to meet the big show. It was right, it was actually the final day of our, our radio station in Florida. What was his name? What was his name? Paul before? White. Yeah. No, but what was his, his wrestler name before he was the big show? The big show? show? Uh, he, was, he went by the giant for a while. Yeah, that was it. Um, but then. I got to meet him. This was the last day of our radio station in Florida. At this point, when I met the big show, had no idea later in the day, Kevin was going to come walking into my office and tell me that they flipped the station and wow. they're going to do it the following morning. So this would have been 2010, uh, November, I think, of 2010. Whoopsie-daisy. And um, so I got to meet the guy, and I'm, I just remember looking at the dude's hands, and I'm like, ah, Clay wasn't lying. Like, those, look at the fucking size of those things. And I have a picture with him where like, we're, we're shaking hands, and his, his hand is the size of my fucking head. Just, 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 dude's just fucking gigantic. And I'm not a short dude. I'm like, I'm a little right. over six feet tall. Yeah. He makes me look tiny when I'm standing next to the guy. Uh, but anyway, so back to the grapefruiting story. Clay was great to um, play poker with because he was a fantastic storyteller. And what he did is after he graduated college, he wasn't going to go to the pros. So he went on to graduate school. And... He just talked about how you meet the biggest nerds in graduate school, and he couldn't believe, like, he just, they were not his, the normal group of people he would hang out with. Yeah. And he said that this one time, they're in graduate school, and he went out, and he's fishing with this one guy. It's really quiet, they're out there, you know, fishing, and all of a sudden, the dude looks at me and goes, so you ever fuck a grapefruit? <laughs> and Clay's like, can't say that I have. That's a new one. And then the guy goes on to, to tell him about how you cut a hole in the grapefruit and you basically hump the grapefruit as opposed to just regular jerking off. And then this kid proceeds to tell Clay, it's okay when it's normal, it's really good when you microwave the grapefruit. Whoa. So then Clay, the way he wraps up the story is he goes, now the whole time I'm sitting there fishing, he goes, A, I just had this guy tell me that he fucks grapefruits. Now B... How many cold grapefruits did this guy fuck until he realized that it's better when you warm it up in the microwave? And it's just, I mean, from there on, it was just story after story from Clay that came. But that's what I found interesting because the story had to do with Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith. 
and how um, she found out from him about it, I think, or something like that. But yeah, so apparently that's a thing that people hump, you know, grapefruits. Look, I guess. people get lonely. Sometimes people, you know, people get lonely and they can't go to farmersonly.com because they're not farmers. Well, Phil in the uh, Facebook chat says, "Wouldn't a grapefruit burn your pee hole? Maybe they were a rubber." I would all, yeah, I would, because you don't want grapefruit juice getting up in there no. in your pee hole. That's not good. It's very acidic. Very uh, acidic. Laka asked who my favorite football team was. I don't really follow football, but the answer is New Orleans Saints. Whatever your favorite football team is. Oh, jeez. Cowboys. And there's Kevin. <laughs> Kevin says Cowboys. Um. No, well, Scott's got a Saints hat. Blanca is a um, Seahawks fan. Seahawks we know that. She's a diehard yeah. Seahawks fan. I, I, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to pick a team to follow, it's going to be the Saints just because I'm from there. Really no other reason. But see, you're from there, but, and you hate the the Tigers. Yeah, I hate LSU. You don't, But you didn't see people jumping on that Saints bandwagon, bandwagon where they all of a sudden got good? It wasn't like that. Different? It, it, was, it, wasn't, yeah, it wasn't the same. It wasn't a status thing. It was, you know, because people had always followed the Saints, even in their bad years. Mm -hmm. So... It was just kind of everybody just celebrated. It's where LSU, nobody ever watched LSU. Then suddenly, it was the only, like, you couldn't even make plans on a Saturday anymore. Oh. In the fall. Like, and then everybody were, becomes a fan. Like, it was even like, oh, you're getting married? Oh, are you going to have a big screen with the, with the game on? You know what? Fuck you. Shit like that. Okay. So. I'm picking up what you're throwing down. All right. So, anyway, if you have any questions for the Facebook live chat, Go ahead, bring them in, because we're going to wrap this thing up already in about 60 seconds or so, unless any more questions come in. Uh, football season does kick off tomorrow. Um, I was pretty okay with going into this season. I get really, like, nervous and stuff during NFL because I, I'm such a big Patriots fan. Yeah. And how everybody hates the fucking Patriots at this point. Like, the Patriots have become the Yankees of the NFL. So are you, are you worried because somebody's going to, like, Gut you in the street or something? Or no, no. I mean, I lived in Miami, and I was, you know, if I wasn't scared about that, then I wasn't scared about that. Um, really quickly, Vanessa Renee says, "Here for the Rick and Morty reference." Get swifty. Yeah, this is true. We love you, Vanessa. The pickle Rick. Uh, James asks if we're going to the GNR concert. I am not. Scott, are you gonna I'm, make it? I'm gonna go see ZZ Top, but not GNR. How fucking weird is that? Yeah, I know. Just fuck it. Um, but no, like I get, I just get really it, like nerve wracked during um, uh, during during football season. But after the Patriots came back to beat the Falcons, won the Super Bowl, I was pretty cool with going into the season. Like, all right, like it's not a big deal. We won last year's Super Bowl. We still have the bragging rights. And then they proceeded to make the team even better. They add Brandon Cooks. They add Stephon Gilmore. They keep um, they, they keep Butler and Gronk is healthy. Edelman went down with an injury. I don't think that's as big of a deal as a lot of people think it's going to be because they're still loaded at wide receiver and running back and tight end. The defense is going to be even better than last year. And um, yeah, like now I'm already. I almost want them to lose early, just lose a random game early so that I don't have to go through the hell of a potential perfect season again. Ah, that is yeah, the most yeah. nerve-wracking fucking thing on the planet. And that's why when people want to poke fun, like, oh, your team lost. Doesn't fucking matter to me anymore. I watched my team rattle off 18 wins, be basically the greatest team ever, and then gack it away in the Super Bowl. So nothing's really going to, you know, cause that, to, unless they do that. Fuck, if they do that again, I might shoot myself. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> like, it's that painful. But yeah, so the NFL kicks off tomorrow. Um, Tommy asks if we're going to get Olympia. I think we should. I think we should get somebody to come in on air and like just completely. Yeah, like, man. Lisa rolled her ankle and you know, you know, buzz with the teeth and everything. And he doesn't have the teeth yet. I think he's getting them right now. They're fitting him for temporary ones. They're partial. Yeah, and then he's going to get the permanent teeth later on down the road. Phil wants to know what happened to my Bring Me the Horizon sweater. I think it's at home. It's in the car. I wore it every day. And when you wear stuff every day, they wear out fucking quick. Yeah. <laughs> like super quick. The only reason I, the only, okay, but the only reason I changed it was because Kevin, our boss, flat out told me, hey, I'm tired of you wearing the same thing every day. Could you throw this in the mix? So, and what I heard was, yeah, sure. I'll wear now this, now wear this every day and leave the Bring Me the Horizon sweater at home. So that's what ended up happening. I mean, it's, it's at home somewhere. Um... How about Dak playing for only one game? 
Oh, does he, or does he mean Ezekiel? James was asking. Well, you got Ezekiel Elliott. He gets to play this week, and then he's got to serve his six-game suspension. You know, Blanca, I blame the curse on the Beatles, too. That's true. And and we're, we're hoping to get Ringo Starr when he comes, because he's coming to town in October. Mm -hmm. And we're, I think we need to have a good long talk with Ringo. Yeah. Well... And so another um, final wrap-up here. Again, if you have movie lines, email them to me, brandon at buzzadamshow.com. Then I can go record that stuff, and I'll have that loaded up ready for the movie game. And um, other than that, I think that's all the questions. We're going to keep this one nice and short. We're working on a ton of stuff here behind the scenes. That's why we're busy today, and hopefully working on more things like this that will be more... Um, what am, what's the word I'm thinking of? More... Topic based, I guess. Yeah, yeah, kind of like look for this channel to be a little bit more active. Like this, one, like we we just kind of ramble here on the after buzz about a bunch of different things. We're looking to hone that in so that uh, you know specific days you'll get a specific topic, um, and, and, and it'll be more consistent in that sense. But Scott, anything of note? No, I think we're good. Uh, be awesome to one another. Fantastic. On that note, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>